Well, I think the future of work is going to be what we make of it. There is no sort of fatalistic future for the, for, for the world of work. But within uh, the policy uh, challenges that we have to uh, address, we certainly have to take into account the public sector, employment in the public sector, and what it takes, frankly, uh, for the state in our societies to fulfill its basic roles. And I see the basic role of the state to provide for its citizens, to provide the quality services that they require for a decent life, to protect them, and also the state has to regulate labour markets as well. So we certainly have to factor in uh, the public sector and public employment uh, into our calculations. And I think we have to put aside something which has been too prevalent in recent years, which is a sort of a, a negative uh, prejudice against uh, the public sector. There has been a sort of a market-driven assumption, not necessarily supported by the facts, that public sector options are somehow less efficient or, or, or less good uh, than the private sector. So I think we have to sort of reset that debate uh, in a way which I think the PSI would want to see it reset and would want to be a part of. Well, I think public sector trade unions face the challenges of the trade union movement in, in general. There is no alternative uh, to uh, organising, to uh, strengthening membership and engaging membership uh, around the work uh, that, that trade unions do, and that applies equally to the public as to the, uh, the private sector. But I think there is an added ingredient uh, for the public sector, which is demonstrating that in addition to uh, protecting the interests and uh, conditions of public sector workers, uh, public sector trade unions have a role uh, in the general welfare of, of society and that in many ways these are the people who provide health services these are the people who provide education to our young people uh, and these are public goods these are public goods that generally must be considered to go beyond narrow market calculation and I think this is a message and a discourse and a narrative that public sector trade unions have a responsibility but also an interest in promoting. There is no doubt, I think, I think we would all agree with this, uh, that the world of work is changing at a pace and on a scale which we've not seen before. Now, we have trouble sometimes, I think, stepping back and looking at the major long-term trends at work. We're always concerned with solving the problems right before us today and tomorrow. And if you look at the world of work, I think there are a couple of things uh, that are self-evident. One is that we have an enormous challenge before us uh, just simply to create enough jobs uh, to ensure a movement towards full employment. Uh, world unemployment today is at record levels, over 200 million people in the world without a job who want a job. Uh, and unfortunately the trend is on an upwards trajectory. How are we going to create the 40 million jobs every year uh, that we need to to absorb young people entering uh, labour markets? So the future of employment is one piece of the story. But in addition to that quantitative dimension, there is the qualitative dimension. The ILO stands not just for jobs, but for decent jobs. And we're seeing that the nature of jobs uh, is changing. Uh, only one in four workers, probably a bit less than that actually, today works in that standard employment situation that we tend to regard as normal, full-time permanent contract. This is a minority of working people. We're seeing a diversification of contracting forms, of ways of working, and we have to get to grips with this. And we have to decide, well, is this diversification necessarily a bad thing? If it's a bad thing, what do we do about it? Or can we adopt really quite radically new approaches to the place of work in, in our society? And it's for all of these reasons that the ILO is launching a, a major initiative to look at the future of work as our organization moves towards its centenary in 2019. We need to be able to ask ourselves the big questions that arise from the long-term transformation uh, of the world of work, which this generation is witness to, but should not be victim to. It should be the architects of a better future.